Put your goggles on. We're covering some hot, shocking stats on today's episode, and we're going to dive deeper and say, is this likely to happen again, not happen, happen crazier? So be sure to check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Before we get it started, I want to remind you the Ultimate Draft Kit is available for pre-order. You got to go right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. And because before March 1st, you are going to get the lowest possible price and you're going to get a bunch of cool stuff like $5 to shopballers.com, 10 bucks to fantasychamps.com, early access for our dynasty and rookie rankings as soon as they're available, plus the opportunity you could be chosen. <laughs> you could pay tribute. <laughs> what was How that one? Well, how do they pay tribute? Because now they'll be in the Listener League and they're sacrificing themselves to the fantasy gods as we smite them from the land, Jason. All right. Woohoo! UltimateDraftKit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, je- <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. I am now your fearless host for the week, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by this week's best friend of the moment, Jason Moore. I always love being your best friend, Mike. I like it too, but it, that's I like it too much. Right, it's got a small sample. Yes, yeah, because if it was all the time, that'd be boring and bland nobody wants that welcome to the podcast make sure you check out ultimate like i was talking about we have some big news that we will announce in just a moment aside from the ultimate draft kit being mm-hmm, available for mm-hmm. for the pre-order but welcome to the show on today's show we're going to be talking about i scorching heart melting stats that might Freak you out your pants. It's just, just going to shock you. So shocking. It's going to be like you're playing with an outlet with a metal with a, fork. With a fork, yeah. Two prongs in. Oh, stats. Kids, don't do that. <laughs> what, what, you, so you went into the outlet and you and the stats got That's you? That's right. That's a shocking stat. That's how our, our staff works. That's right. That's how we research. We, we go high voltage. So that's what we're talking about on today's show. We got some buy or sell. Want to remind you. Check out the YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. See our beautiful faces. See this guy. He's over there in the corner. He's actually in the best seat in the house. I don't know if you know that, Jason. Eh, I prefer front and center middle. He's been there. That's He's, true. He was he there last week. There. I'm finally back from my illness, and dad is away playing with the family. Yes. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And please follow us on the Twitter sphere at the FF Ballers. Jason, I will allow you to bring up the big oh, news. Oh, the big news. Well, you talked about our, our staff over here. Yes. We have a very close, tight-knit staff. So many secrets. And we might be expecting soon Ooh. and adding to the family because this is a very true rarity. But we might, we're might. we looking right now. For This is the first time we've ever done this. Ever. Ever, ever in our history, first time we're announcing on the show that we have a job opening. And before everyone is like, oh my gosh, that's great. I love fantasy football. I'm in. No, no, no. It's a very specific (laughs) job opening for only a few people out there in the world that can that can do this job. We are looking for a high end front end web developer slash marketer, someone that and look. Andy has been you like our website, you like our web products. We we came out with the Ultimate Draft Kit app right. this year. We you know, we've got a background in uh, app development, web development. Andy's been doing this. Andy does all the front end stuff that you see. Yes, yeah, so, so for the people are like, oh, well, that's that sounds like two different things." Like how could one person possibly do both of the, have both of these skill sets? And we say he works for us. Yeah. Andy's already here. We just need another Andy. We just uh, look, are you Andy? So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for someone first else. First name Andy. You have to have the first name Andy. That's a requirement. 
Second is probably going to be last name Holloway. That at the end of this, we're going to be like, okay, but you're just not as good. Oh, that would be so confusing. <laughs> that would be really confusing. So here's the deal: we're looking for someone with uh, years of experience. You are truly great at UX, UI design, front end, all the web markups. The you know your your we want someone to come in because Andy is great at this stuff and make Andy look so stupid. Yes. We want please. you to come in and be like, Andy, you don't even know CSS. Embarrass him. What's this? HTML four? Andy, get out of here. Let me teach you some things, okay? And if you are the person that is right now listening and you're going, Oh my goodness, this is what I am the best in the world at. And I love the fantasy footballers. I love the brand. I love fantasy football. Well, you might want to go to thefantasyfootballers.com slash careers. Thefantasyfootballers.com slash careers. We'll be taking applications for probably another week and uh, then reaching back out to people. Yes. Do not delay. Head over there. Check it out. Let's get into some buy or sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Today's edition of Buy or Sell, Jason. Mm -hmm. I'm prepped. Excellent. It is about Philip Lindsay, superstar undrafted free agent running back, plays for the Denver Broncos. Will Philip Lindsay top 1,000 rushing yards again in 2020? For some context, you might say, of course, Philip Lindsay will do that. He's done but it every year of his career. He has, but he has also done it by the hair on his chinny chin chin. Because last year, just over a thousand, so one thousand eleven rushing yards. And the year before that, his rookie year, a thousand thirty seven. He's in a bit of a timeshare with Royce Freeman. How do you expect Philip Lindsay will be uh, used in the offense? Will he hit that thousand yards on the ground? So Philip Lindsay, I think, is a truly excellent running back. Like when we watch him, he is fast to the hole. He's quick. He's shifty. He's everything you need, which is why he can be a undrafted guy who's put to back to back two separate thousand yard seasons. But you need context from last year, right? Last year, the first half of the season, he was averaging four and a half yards a carry looking great, not getting the opportunity. They go into their bye week in week 10, and coming out of the bye, they decide he's going to be the man. They give him much more of a workload, and during that time, he was actually worse on his efficiency side. So you think, well, for him to really succeed, he needs more work. But then when they gave it to him, he wasn't as good. And the beginning of the year, when it was a timeshare, he's very efficient, he was not as involved as anybody in fantasy would have liked in the passing game, and now you've got a change at the offensive coordinator uh, position. Pat Shermer coming in. But I, I, I view that as a positive. Do you? I do. It, Pat Shermer has been in charge of – when he was an OC, he's been in charge of some very prolific rushing offenses. Yes. 2017, the, uh, he, for the Minnesota Vikings, they, had, uh, they were seventh in yards a couple years back for the – for the Philadelphia Eagles, top 10 for two consecutive years. I mean, it's, it, he has it in his resume to have a, a top 10 rushing game. He certainly does, but I would, I would look to those Eagles and remind you that that was the Latavius Murray, Jarek McKinnon year where he had a really nice split. You mean which, Vikings? Or yes. Yeah, uh, what did I say? You said Eagles. Mm. Nope. Those, they have, I meant Vikings. Um, you know, where he had an excellent year on the ground, but it was a timeshare. It was split. And he's one that's going to use what he has. Like Pat Shermer, I think is a smart coach. Uh, you know, he, he didn't have a timeshare with Saquon because he had Saquon. Right. Well, he's got Royce Freeman. Who's not bad. And he's got Philip Lindsay. Who's pretty good. And I think he's going to timeshare these guys. So if I had to put right now, I think it's a very tough line, but if I had to say for sure, I'm betting that he hits the 1,000 or misses, I'm going to say he misses because I think it will be a little bit more status quo from uh, being a full running back by committee. I think he will. Yeah, I'm going to sell it as well. I mean, he's been just barely making it. This Philip Lindsay was like he, he was the most frustrating running back 19, I think, in the history of fantasy football where you were never – 
sure you could play him. Even when he was getting you points, he was just kind of there. Like, I mean, he was succeeding for you, but you never felt really great about it. There was a stretch of three weeks in a row where we're watching all the games, as we do, and every time I look up at the TV, Philip Lindsay is looking like a magician. And we're just like, man, this guy's dominating. Smoke bomb. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the game, it's like, oh, he had 63 yards. What? Like, where, where, and, and very few receptions and no touchdown. It was sucky for fantasy, even though he looks great. And it, yeah, it was very frustrating. So I, maybe it's the, the sourness of his fantasy letdown, uh, the lack of receiving work, which he's good enough at. But uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sell. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com, use our registration code BALLERS, and you're going to get $10 credit for your first purchase. Highly recommend it. I'm on there basically every other day checking out what the new stuff is. Who's on the wall today, Brooks? Oh, we got Oh, Kenny Galladay. I see what you did there, Brooks. Oh, Kenny G. Kenny G, the smooth one himself, may or may not come up in these uh, foot-destroying stats. I'm just trying to find a new body part to, to okay. take care we'll of. We'll take the whole body down by the end of the we'll, – that we'll, we'll collectively get bodied. Stats so intense, they'll break your hip. Stats so hardcore, your digestion system is ruined. Stats so flaming hot, your rectum no longer exists. Yeah, and that's if they can get past the esophagus <laughs> – on the way there, just terrorizing your throat. Let's get to it. <laughs> I don't even remember what we're doing. All right, let's yeah, let's get to it. How'd you do that? Hi. It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. I didn't remember that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's been about a year since we heard that drop. Oh, that was fantastic work by the audio person. Number one. And so we, we worked with the staff. The, our very own Kyle the Borgogan was also working with us. So some of these names for stats, as we like to do, we like to name things mm -hmm. here. Got to title it right. He says, I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. All right, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson would have been the QB 12 if you didn't count any of his rushing stats, which is that's still pretty awesome. Oh, he would be a quarterback one if you take out the you know the majority right. of his strength. More rushing yards than thirteen other teams combined from the quarterback position. He had just over the three thousand passing yards, but of course the nine percent touchdown rate, which and so he had the lowest lowest for a passing touchdown leader since nineteen seventy eight in terms of passing yards. You have to go back to the Terry Bradshaw back when he had a. Flowing head of hair. Yeah, I was going to say, if you saw Terry Bradshaw through Super Bowl weekend, you know how old this stat is. <laughs> you go, oh, wow. that's that's It's been a while since Age someone... Age comes for people in a different way, and I think it's been a little bit crueler to, to Terry to B. Terry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not has not been nice. You know, my favorite stat that uh, I was I was telling this to my my father-in-law we were talking about uh Lamar Jackson this this uh last week while I was off and the the thing that is so crazy to me so Saquon Barkley coming out of college was like the most prolific rusher breaking everybody's m models because of right. statistical awesomeness his rushing yards and Lamar Jackson coming out of college had more rushing yards than Saquon Barkley that final year and if you look at what he did this year and you think about, like, Leonard Fournette, mm -hmm. one of the top rushers in the league, right. had fewer rushing yards than Lamar Jackson. So uh, 900, 1,000 yards rushing for Lamar Jackson. Is that a safe floor that you're just locking that in? I think it is an absolute locked-in safe floor. It, it, if you who has more rushing yards next year, Philip Lindsay or Lamar Jackson? It Lamar, is Lamar Jackson. Jackson. Because I would definitely buy the thousand-yard benchmark for Lamar Jackson. An interesting trend as well: the NFL quarterback rushing totals or rushing touchdown totals are going up every single year as the league finds more and more ways, more of these guys who are dynamic and can get it done without just standing there. In the pocket. Yeah, and the thing is, is uh, there's not another 
Lamar Jackson. He's right. He's special. But what he does do is he opens up the world for those other very good athletic mobile quarterbacks who aren't like Deshaun Watson is a phenomenal. He's a, he's a magician with his legs, but he doesn't rush like Lamar Jackson because right. nobody does, not since Michael Vick. But the success of these teams is allowing more college quarterbacks with that athleticism to come in and say, okay, let's let's utilize this. And so, yeah, the rushing touchdown numbers are only going to keep going up. Also, a side note here, on Madden 20, Lamar Jackson is – He's Bo Jackson from Tech Mobile. Oh, he I'm, breaks it? Yeah, I've been playing my boy. Like he's He finally got to the point where he's like, okay, Dad, we're not just on the same team anymore. We're going to play. And I'm like, are you are you sure you really want to do this? He's not the best at losing yet. Mm. He's he's excellent at winning. <laughs> like, <laughs> when he has done something well, you know about it. But the losing, not not so much. And he just keeps Lamar Jackson destroying me every single time we play. It'll be fourth and twenty plus on like on his side of the of the field on like his fifteen, and he's like, oh, "I'm gonna go for it." I'm like, okay, boy, <laughs> I I think you should punt. He's like, "No, I'm gonna go for it," and then he'll run off an eighty yard touchdown on me, oh. and this just happens over and over. That fix the game. I don't it's think it's <laughs> broken, Mike. I think it's resembling real life. I mean, you could say fix it's the game. Terrible. Like they should put ankle weights on Lamar Jackson just by rule. And then they have this like X factor now where he gets supercharged every time he if he gets three ten yard runs. Now he's faster. Oh no way! Yeah, it's like the NBA jammed him, and and I lose to my son now at all the time in Madden, and it sucks. <laughs> all right, fifth year wide receiver breakout. This one is brought up in honor, of course, of Mister Devonte Parker. Now, we want to highlight the fact that it seems like a wide receiver breaking out in their fifth year seems like that's impossible. It seems like this has to be just a very, very rare thing. That's what Devontae Park was able to do, 72 receptions, 1,200 yards, and nine touchdowns, which is insane because 2019 accounted for 35% of his receiving yards. Yeah, he basically in his 5-year career. He basically the first 4 years of his career had a you know, a little over 2000 receiving yards. And then boom bam last year, 1200 yards, full breakout in the 5th year. But there are other instances of this happening. Like big time wide receivers who did not top 1200 receiving yards until their 5th year. Like Art Powell, 1963. <laughs> yeah, that that one's a little bit too old, but like some of some of our listeners are going to know Art Monk from Washington, who became a superstar. More recently, Joe Horn. Joe Horn turned into an absolute fantasy stud as soon as he arrived in New Orleans, but he had really done not a lot but uh, b before that time. Jeremy Macklin had his breakout year, his real breakout year, his fifth year. Golden Tate, who was shackled by Seattle. He went to Detroit. All of us thought, okay, well, great. You went and you took the money. And then Golden Tate turned into this phenomenal wide receiver. At least he was great before, but I mean phenomenal as in he puts up production. Well, a lot of these guys, it, it takes that change of scenery, right? He went and he left, and then, of course, he's better when he's allowed to be in an offense that passes to wide receivers, similar to Emmanuel Sanders, right? who in his fifth year, he got Peyton Manning. That helps things. That helps things, but... So in Devontae Parker's fifth year, he got rid of Adam Gase. Oh, that so helps a lot. That's, that's pretty equal. <laughs> getting, get the stink out. So here's a couple players. They have, uh, we're asking, can they hit the 1,200-yard mark? Not all of them are in their fifth year because the, the fifth-year players is going to be tough when I bring them up, Jason. Okay. You're saying, can they break it? But these players, I'm going to give you a few. I want you to hedge and put them in order. Who is most likely to break 1,200 yards? Tyler Boyd, who actually is in his fifth year. Okay. Tyler Lockett. Stephon Diggs. John Brown. All right. I would go – I'm going to go Tyler Lockett first. Okay. Uh, I think Tyler Boyd with Joe Burrow and a rookie coming in, even if he's fantastic, is not going to be able to. So I would go Tyler Lockett, Stephon Diggs, Tyler Boyd. John Brown. And as far as who I think has the best chance, obviously Lockett, I don't think it's a great chance. So I, I would I would say 
a major breakout to 1,200 yards, probably probably not going to happen for these guys. I can get behind that. So year five players, now you have to pick one of these guys because a lot of the fifth-year players, if they haven't done anything, they're just not around in the league anymore. So that's kind of a rarity. But, but imagine but imagine picking Devontae Parker right. last year. Like this, this, it, it sounds stupid. Because if last year, if I was telling you, oh, dude, just wait, this is Devontae this is the Parker's year. year. <laughs> You've told me that four times in a row. You're right. going to go with the fifth? All right, here we go. Will Fuller, Sterling Shepard, brace yourself. Josh Doxson, Laquan Treadwell, Corey Coleman, the first round trio. I mean, Will Fuller was in the first round with them, but Doxson, Treadwell, Corey Coleman – Often referred to as the top three wide receivers in that rookie class who have done absolutely nothing. And yes, Corey Coleman is still around. He could he could be back with the Giants this year. So I want you to ignore the stench. Who of those guys can actually break 1,200 yards? Who is the new Devontae Parker? Okay. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> So Josh Doxson actually reminds me a lot of Devontae Parker, but the big problem with Josh Doxson, I would say his biggest hurdle is I don't think he has a team. So right. th that's you got to play in the NFL in order to do it. But he does remind me uh, more physically and coming out of college, the uh, and then the, the disappointment. But uh, obviously, if I if I pick one out of everybody there, it would be Will Fuller. Just has to stay healthy. Yeah, if Will Fuller is healthy. What do you put the odds at that he can actually hit 1,200 yards? If he played 16 games, I think it's realistic for him to hit 1,200 yards. Eh, you know, maybe he's 1,100, over 1,000, but I th he's a 1,000-yard receiver if he plays 16 games. This year was his best season at 670 yards. That Good. is insane to me. For Will Fuller? Yes. Because he's had just such absolute monster games. Yeah, <laughs> like, the problem is when we say stay healthy – that's easier said than done right. for him. Hey, speaking of staying healthy, we oh. want to thank today's sponsor, Quip, because, look, Quip knows about having good teeth. It's about healthy habits. They know about teeth. They do. They, they, they know that no matter what, if you have good habits, you're good. And that means brushing for two minutes, twice a day, and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. And this is coming from Quip, but look, Quip makes it super easy, super simple. You get started with an electric toothbrush. Uh, they, they have sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer, so every 30 seconds you switch. You, got, you put your mouth into four quadrants, that's what I do, and you switch every time it uh, gives you that little quadrants? change. Quadrants? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, you got front of upper. You got the, the under of upper. Under upper. Under upper. The old under upper. The old under upper. The front of the bottom <laughs> teeth. The inside of the bottom teeth. This is how I look. That's how I do it. That's how maybe you could do it if you want to get Quip. Quip the under upper. Yeah, Quip the under upper. It's easy. Look, uh, right now, Quip is delivering fresh brush heads, floss, toothpaste, refills to your door every three months with free shipping. Your routine is always great. And if you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash footballers. Quip, the good habits company. Oh, we're really let's, taking this to a Let's new place. get smooth. Because we're talking about Mr. Smooth Routes, Mr. Kenny G. We're talking about the leader in, oh man, it's so good. The leader in the NFL in 10 zone targets and, according to Pro Football Focus, targets of over 20 yards. So that's a classified as a deep target. He's getting those air yards. So he's getting air yards, he's getting high leverage targets inside the 10 zone, and he's only 25th in targets total. But there's a reason. Among pass catchers. Well, he was a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy. Right. And the reason is because the two most valuable things that he you He got all of them. He, the two most valuable things you can get as a wide receiver are basically those, you know, targets around the goal line, duh. Yep. And a lot of air yards down the field. Like, those two things combined, you want. He got both of them. He was phenomenal for fantasy 
much more consistent than I think a lot of people realize because he had to do it with backup quarterback play and then wow. back up to the backup quarterback play. The The question now is, is it, you know, you could go either way on this. You could say, well, this is such a great indication, such a perfect indication that he is set up for success in the future because he gets the deep targets, he gets the red zone, the tin zone looks even, but he was also 25th in targets total, and it took such a – he was – you know, look, when you lead the league in both of those two good categories, there's nowhere to go but down, right? In 2015, that was the last time we saw someone lead in both categories. It was the target monster himself, Allen Robinson. Oh, man. That was a great year. That was a great year. It got a lot of people to buy in for 2016. I don't think those people were happy. Fair enough. So you're calling for Kenny Galladay regression, even though Matt Stafford led the league. No. 19.6% of his attempts went 20-plus yards. I, I'm I'm asking. I'm, oh. I'm bringing oh, up the point I, that it could be either a really good stat for him all right. or a regression alert and asking the question, which do we believe it is? I'm buying in. You're buying in. I'm he, buying in as long as we can get Stafford like some adamantium for his spine because there seems to be some serious problems going on in there. Mm -hmm. Like, let's fix that thing up because Stafford still has plenty of years to play. Stafford was awesome. We highlighted him in the truth about quarterbacks that Stafford will be the forgotten guy when, when it comes to next year's draft that he was an absolute beast for his whatever seven or eight game run. And I think Kenny Galladay is the truth. That was the third year breakout for Kenny Galladay. I think he can still improve. And and he's going to get those air yards. Will he get the 10 zone targets? Uh, that remains to be seen. But I still I want my big body the receivers to get those uh, to get the air opportunities to get those air yards. And I think Kenny Galladay is just going to keep feasting on them. So I look, I I really do love Kenny Galladay's talent, and I when you pair that up with Matthew Stafford, he is great. But I, if at the end of the day, I think he will come down from these two stats, and similar to what you saw with Allen Robinson, when it just seemed like well he was getting everything perfect the the following year in 2016, uh, you know he had the same amount of targets. He also had the same quarterback. Sure. Who was so, Blake Bortles. <laughs> well, yeah, but he had Blake Bortles in 2015, too. Magic happens w once for Blake Bortles. He's just, what, do, what, do we even have that around? Oh, man. There's no way that our soundboard still has. I don't think it Bl does. Blake the snake in it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I got this snake, <laughs> man. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the reality was, if you remember that, that those were the two years where. Blake Bortles had 151 targets both years in a row. One of those years, he had 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. The following year, he had 883 yards and six touchdowns. The, he's not going to lead the league in red zone targets and deep passes next year. So even with the quarterback upgrade, I think he's good, but he's not going to take a leap up from where he finished. I got a snake, <laughs> man. Nicely done. You, you gave I me enough, enough time. time. I made it happen. That's teamwork. <laughs> Our next stat. The ominous bell is very appropriate yet again. That sound effect came in when it was Le'Veon Bell watch uh, two years ago when it was, is Bell coming back now, this week? Now, like at least then it was, it, you wanted to watch. Right. Now it's like, a, avert your eyes. For players with 245 or more carries in a season. Now, real quick, that that has, there have been 565, 565 players have had 245 carries. Le'Veon Bell's 52.6 rushing yards per game ranks 563rd <laughs> out of the aforementioned 565. That's not good. That's... That's very ominous. Good thing they gave him all that money. Look, and, and it's and I'm this isn't even me saying it's Levy on Bell's fault. There's just there's so much more that goes into a running game than oh, I'm just I'm the best running back. I mean you, unless you're Saquon Barkley, who can 
do everything by himself. Even he gets shut down from time to time. If you don't have help from the rest of your team, if you have a black hole calling your plays, Mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to get it done. So projecting Le'Veon Bell moving forward, Jason, are you taking the volume? Last year he was the ninth overall pick. I can't imagine he tumbles too far. But let's say Le'Veon Bell is is there in the third round. Would you ever consider going wide receiver, wide receiver, Le'Veon Bell? I I do not want Lev Bell to be my running back one, so I wouldn't do that. Now, would I consider having Lev Bell in the third round? Yeah, I I would. I mean, the the volume is still. Lev Bell was the running back seventeen or something, I believe, this year, and. Um, that's not good. It's certainly not good when you're drafting him, you know, to be a top 10 back, but if you're drafting him appropriately, if he falls enough, then yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the volume. Do I believe narratives that they're going to fix the offensive line another year with Adam Gase? Offensive and another- line, end of season ranking for pro football focus. The Jets were 28th. Right, and so that's that's a huge area to improve for them. Let's say they go out and sign someone in free agency. They draft someone. You've got another year for Sam Darnold, and obviously he missed part of this year. A little kissing everybody. <laughs> oh, the when he was the smooch bandit. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got Adam Gase. So there's going to be narrative of Lev Bell should be drafted very high again because the volume is there, and now things are going to start clicking, and I will not in any way, shape, or form buy into that. Not at all. I don't trust Adam Gase as an offensive mind to get the most out of his players, and I don't think it's a coincidence that on this not great team, a now aging running back getting volume is ending up 563rd out of 565 people. I'm not buying in next year. Let's talk about another old man then real quick. Okay. Adrian Peterson. Very old. Could he possibly be the next Frank Gore? Adrian Peterson had 12 runs of 15 or more yards. That's as many as Ezekiel Elliott. That's one more than Philip Lindsay. That's two more than Alvin Kamara. In fact, it's one fewer than the Bears, Dolphins, and Le'Veon Bell combined. (laughs) Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. He still has a little bit of juice, and, and it's worth bringing up. Uh, because right now it's being reported that the the Washington Redskins are probably picking up. That's yeah, that's why we're highlighting. Yeah, him. I mean, so he'll be back next year, and he'll have fantasy relevant games, moments when bye weeks and things like that injuries happen. He's obviously not going to be a superstar anymore. But when you watched him, you saw that he's still. I think I think it's appropriate to say he's the next Frank Gore. He's just the guy that every year, year after year after year after year, and he already has been, is like, well, he's just going to be completely D-U-N done. And he showed this year, I mean, 12 runs of 15 yards or more, you you can't do that without still having juice. Now you have have the coaching change. Bill Callahan, gone. Mm -hmm. Running guru. Mm -hmm. And also... Very big fan of old man strength and very big fan of I'm I'm a I'm a strong man. I run the ball. Now, will Adrian Peterson see the same opportunity? Will he see the same lanes? And the bigger question is, because Darius Geis is still there. I mean, the, the tale of Darius Geis that just never seems to get going. If you were a competing team in Dynasty right now, because obviously things can change real quick, would you trade a fourth round rookie pick for Adrian Peterson? A fourth rounder, sure. I think most fourth. Would rounders- you trade a third round rookie pick mm. back of the third for Adrian Peterson? Back of the third. You just moved it from a third to back. Well, of I said because you're a competing team, so I'm assuming that you finish at least in the middle of the pack. Sure, I, I guess back of the third. This is a really good draft year. It, if this was last year, I would have been willing to do that. This coming year, I think there's enough depth where I'm I'm keeping the third. All right, let's talk about tight ends. In 2019, five different tight ends had over a 22% market share of their team's targets. You had Zeus, Travis Kelsey, Darren, ooh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, goo goo, get you. Darren, I am the walrus Waller. 
Mark Mandrews. There's a lot of nicknames in this list. George Kittle and Zach Ertz. Five tight ends over the 20% market share uh, area. Five tight ends that were excellent for your fantasy team. And the last five years prior to that, there's only been three. Every, exactly. every single year, there's been three different tight ends that have had it. So this year, there was, you know, there's there's more involvement. And I think that the uh, – look, we all saw Kittle and Kelsey and Ertz doing this, right? They were drafted to be that. So the real, the real stat here is the fact that there were two – more unknown or at the very least unproven tight ends right who then became the target focal leader of their respective offense and that was uh, obviously Darren Waller and Mark Andrews with the Raiders and the Ravens so are there any other teams that start with Ra that <laughs> can get their tight ends involved that's the question and I mean Austin Hooper maybe could have gotten there no but that's a Chargers, not the Rogers. <laughs> it's the Falcons. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even listening. I was thinking <laughs> Hunter, Henry. Hunter Henry. Yeah, all right. Not the Rogers. Not the, the <laughs> Ralkins. All right, let me throw you a, a, a couple names. Well, this this one's a little bit difficult for the for Seattle because Will Disley was having a a, a pretty solid year in terms of at least touchdowns, but Jacob Hollister kind of became a very necessary part dude 17 percent of seattle's targets get out of here with that no when he was playing yes jacob hollister could go away no okay he's not good enough to demand uh, a 20 plus percent uh, market share they dealt with other wide receivers getting injured coming that's into what i mean he, he became very necessary yeah, and he's not good enough to demand that going forward. So no, I don't I do not believe that he can be in the 20% next season. All right, I'm just it's hard to find names that could possibly make this jump. What about What about Mike Gesicki? That's an He sat on he was just under 15%. This was like a under the radar breakout. I don't know exactly what you would want to call that. I think well, what it what it really is is it's a pre-breakout if a breakout ever happens. What you saw It's like he cracked the wall. Yeah, and now he's going to try to then you know, Kool-Aid Kool yeah. man through. Um, but he was drafted to be a dominant force. He has the talent, the physical gifts to be that. It's just a matter of whether or not the scheme will allow him the opportunities to do that. But tight ends take years to develop. We've said this, you know, if you've listened forever, tight ends don't break into the league really quickly or easily. Travis Kelsey wasn't a superstar his rookie year. Uh, you know, George Kittle wasn't a superstar early on. It takes a couple years for them to really establish dominance. And I, I think Kasiki is a name that is worth monitoring. The question is going to be, uh, their new scheme, obviously, we don't know for sure who the quarterback's going to be. It's going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, Probably will be. Yeah, and and um, and the other weapons, the health of Preston Williams, do they bring in another wide receiver? That's true. I was going to say over the second half, he was averaging over seven targets a game. His yardage was still pretty low at 40 yards a game, but he was on a pace of 10 touchdowns for an entire season. However, Preston Williams' injury kind of – coincides with that that timeline it did he benefited the most well him and Parker both but uh, Gasicki would not have had the opportunity to break out the way he did the second half of the year if Preston Williams had stayed healthy that being said look this is the NFL where once a guy breaks out once coaches can see the talent and the way to utilize a guy on the field they're not just gonna go wow well, I don't need that anymore <laughs> you know they if he can do nice it, work <laughs> nice work get back Get in the back of the line. So, uh, yeah, I think he's just about the only name that can add to this list. But I expect this list to be smaller. I do not think Darren Waller next season hits the twenty percent. Hits the twenty percent mark at all. You talk about a <sighs> that team. will be sad. It will be because it's a great drop. Let's hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> they lost Antonio Brown, <laughs> Tyrell Williams at times, uh, Hunter Renfro at times. He's good, but Waller was a beneficiary. Yes. All right, let's talk about some teams who aren't who we thought they were because it's the NFL. Wacky things happen. 
things get turned upside down sometimes. The Rams, who were on this rocket ship trajectory of third in 2018, they were third in rushing yards, fifth in passing yards, second in points per game. They dropped all the way to 26th in rushing yards per game and 11th in points. I'm, I'm actually surprised to see that they managed to hold on to the 11th position. Well, you know, their their passing game didn't really take as big a hit as I think. Well, most- it, because they were trying to catch up all the time. So, I mean, those were a lot of empty yards, I yeah, think, for the Rams. There was, there was, uh, there was some garbage games, uh, garbage time uh, games, but I, I, I think that the passing game was – was fine. I mean, you had Cooper Cup tearing it up for a while, and then you had uh, obviously Robert Woods very consistent in the second half of the year. And Higby, the Higby breakout really changed things. I think the real issue here was the offensive line in the running game. Um, so coming into this season, we should have been able to see that there was major offensive line problems. I I feel like you know it's it's always hard to say is this just hindsight being twenty twenty and being like oh well duh or Coming, That's how I like to do my analysis. Coming into the duh. season. Because so much talk was made about Todd Gurley's knee. And, yeah, duh. And whether or not they're going to use him. And they drafted a high running back. And, uh, you know, it was all Gurley. And so I guess the question is, do you think their running game is because of Gurley himself, the man, his knee, his ability? Do you think it was the offensive line? Do you think it was a combination of both? It's always a combo of both, but – in terms of weight of where I'm putting, I'm putting the majority of the blame on the offensive line, but I do think that Gurley's having that skill set is going to degrade and it's going to start degrading more and more every year because of the knee. Yeah, I mean, I I put it almost entirely on the offensive line. I I didn't really see anything from Gurley that looked any different than the Jeff Fisher years, which were bad when they had no offensive line there. When it was like. I kept wanting to think, oh, he looks a little slower. Even you know, why isn't he out running? He's a guy that when you when you give him those opportunities, he can break away uh, amazing plays. And for some weird, strange reason, they didn't utilize him in the passing game the way that they had the the few years prior. And maybe that is due to the offensive line, the scheming, bringing more tight ends in to help block. But uh, yeah, teams teams can change. What's yeah. another team? So the Forty ers Rushing yards in 2018, they were 13th. I mean, Kyle Shanahan, he likes to establish it. Passing yards, they were 15th. And in points scored, they were 21st. So pretty pretty mediocre across the board. That jumped all the way to second in rushing yards per game. Stayed in the middle at passing yards, 13th. But jumped up to second in points scored per game. Scoring nearly 30 points a game. Does this seem sustainable? I don't know that it's sustainable, but we knew it was going to rocket up from where they were because the year prior in 2018, the rushing yards to rushing touchdown number was completely the opposite. It was it was very similar to what we see with other teams where you, you just know positive regression is coming. You say there's no way you can have this many yards with this few of touchdowns, a la the Jaguars this season. Um, if you have that many rushing yards again next year, that much opportunity, the scores will come. They also didn't have their starting quarterback two years ago. Yeah, that's certainly not going to help you, although... No, it's not. C.J. Beathard, I mean, uh, maybe he would have won that Super Bowl. Whoa! <laughs> I'm just whoa! kidding. I'm just kidding. I just want to start Hot a fire. Stats. Skip Bayless. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that's your skip? Yeah, that was my skip. Nicely done. Another team who turned things around the wrong direction. Wagons East. Oh. That's a good junk candy uh, reference from people out there. Yeah. <laughs> the Bears. The Bears. 2018, 11th in rushing yards per game, 21st in passing yards per game. We call that the Trubisky model. Ninth in points scored. So they were still a solid team. They flipped the script, went from 11th in rushing to 27th, 25th in passing yards per game, and plummeted to 29th in scoring. Can the Bears get things fixed? And was this was this a Jordan Howard situation? I think this was a combination of two things. One is Jordan Howard. He doesn't get enough respect, and genuinely from, from anybody, including our show. 
Uh, Jordan Howard is not someone that we just look at as this phenomenal running back. But he might just be. He might just be a really great running back because all he's done is be really good everywhere. And when he just left, it, it was it was you know he the the Bears were like, man, I wish we could run like when we had Jordan Howard. <laughs> the other side of it though is they had horrendous injuries to their tight end position, and the Bears utilized the tight ends or at least want to. They couldn't because they didn't. At one point, it felt like they didn't even have one on the roster. Like right. Cordero Patterson went to the coach and was like. I'll play tight end if you need me to because we don't have any. And so I expect them to go heavy at that in free agency since that's such a key to their running game and uh, their offensive system. Uh, Matt Nagy coming from, you know, Andy Reid's coaching tree. So, you know, I, I, part of that is that. But I, I do think David Montgomery is not as good. Whoa, we're, we're already back? Yeah, uh, look, you st uh, it's a full circle. That's where I started with him. The first nickname I gave David Montgomery was true. David Montgomery because I thought his college tape was very uninspiring, and he was good at everything, great at nothing. And I gave him a comp of the last five years, Frank Gore. Like, he's he's solid. He can do it, but he's not going to light things up. And, uh, yeah, so can they turn it around? Yes, but... I don't think it's going to be some great running team the next year. All right, well, let's put your, your skip mask back on. Unless they get Cam Newton. Oh, oh, unless the Bears get Cam Newton? Yeah. Then the you're in? Then I'm into their running game for sure. All right. Hot – I need hot takes, though. Okay. Because we're talking about teams that are going to turn things around. As we had, we're talking about with Devontae Parker, if you let – last offseason, if you were standing here saying into the microphone that Devontae Parker is about to break out, be awesome – win fantasy championships, the, our show would have been canceled. They mm -hmm. would have removed it from all podcast players. It would be done. If you had said the San Francisco 49ers are going to be a quarter away from winning the Super Bowl, once again, our show would have already been canceled. So try to get the show canceled Okay, with a hot take. Who's turning it around? And this could be both ways. You, you can go with, with the, the Wagons East approach if you want. Say this team – dominating i think i see a huge swing of the pendulum to them to shift to the bottom or someone rising to the top your call okay i'll give you one of each i'm going to start perfect with, i'm going to start with the top to the bottom and i'm going to say that the baltimore ravens are going to have a very not fun crash to earth <laughs> next season all right so let's let's extrapolate on that a little bit so baltimore 33 points a game that was first place over, and the Niners were second at under thirty points. So the Baltimore Ravens were scoring tons and tons of points. I'm when not you saying say that. I'm falls, not saying that they fall to fifth. I'm saying that they fall out of the top ten. Whoa, okay. I'm saying that. All right, there we go. I'm <sighs> yeah, because Sizzle. when you have an entire off season with a full tape of the Greg Roman offense for Lamar Jackson. You you can go back and look at, okay, we, we push, you know, the Titans are pushing Lamar Jackson to the sidelines and not letting him have the middle right. of the field. Finding out how to stop this offense that when you watch, you just go, it, it is unstoppable. Now, I tried that against my son in Madden. I used, a, <laughs> I used a bunch of the game tape and him just calling the same play over and over, but I can't stop him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just Look, saying, Lamar Jackson's a freak. And yes, everybody thinks I could tackle him here, and they can't. I I certainly don't. But the nine percent touchdown passing rate that will come down will come crashing down. And if they can figure out a little bit more of the RPO uh, stoppers with an entire off season, I think that there could be struggles there on offense next year. So that that's the one that I think uh, going from, uh, you know, the top that, to the That will bottom. have a bit of fall. I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit. I will say the Pittsburgh Steelers go from one of the worst offenses to a top 15 offense. Uh, yeah, that's – Hot takes. Oh, super hot. How about – Super safe hot takes. How about the New York Giants? Okay. What are they going to do? They gonna get worse? Uh, how? <laughs> no, I think they take because a, they weren't the worst. I think they take a a great step forward on offense, and I think that uh, Daniel Jones can show that he he's got this. All right, bye he's, bye. Eli. He's got this. <laughs> he's got this.
That is not the way you inspire confidence. If Daniel Jones came into this, the huddle with that voice, don't worry, guys. I got this. <laughs> okay <laughs> is not okay. Yeah, exactly. Right? No, but my point is, Darius Slayton All was right. a rookie this year. What about that, Corey Coleman? <laughs> sure. Uh, you, you know, Golden Tate, Darius Slayton, and Sterling Shepard. Coming into this past season, it, it seemed like the Giants really need some wide receiver help. Next year, we might be saying, wow, they've got three of the best wide receivers out there. And if Daniel Jones, you know, steps up, just stop fumbling. Because Daniel That's Jones true. moved the ball fine. He, you can't score when you fumble. He had 18 fumbles. That's not possible. That's not. He didn't even start the whole year. Just stop fumbling the ball, Daniel Jones. And then, of course, you got Saquon. So they could end up being a surprisingly powerful offense, I think. Let's get into the mailbag. 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 Ooh. All right. This one comes in from Twitter. Milk? I don't know what's going on there, but it's at underscore underscore devu16. Dynasty League, Jason. Mm -hmm. Rank, Joseph Mixon, Devin Singletary, Joshua Jacobs. Mm. I like all three in Dynasty, but I would order them Joshua Jacobs, Joe Mixon, Okay, Devin. so you that was where I was, wasn't was sure what you would do. I, Singletary, we all love him, but you can't put him at the top of this list, or even second yet. No. So you would take Jacobs over Joe Mixon in a Dynasty League just because of age? Well, you... You already have the age issue of, uh, you know, you got you've got more years. It's not like Joe Mixon is an old guy, but Josh Jacobs coming in as a rookie, uh, he looked electric. Neither one of those guys really caught passes, and we could talk about oh Jalen Rashard, you know, maybe Josh Jacobs doesn't get involved in the passing game, but maybe Joe Mixon doesn't either. They both are capable. I'm going to take the younger guy with the higher draft capital who came out his rookie year and looked phenomenal. Uh, I think Josh Jacobs has a brighter future. This one's from Twitter from Ethan Roberts. If you could institute a new rule or remove a rule from the NFL, what would it be and why? Okay. An, any new rule. I can jump in here if you yeah, don't have one. Go. So we had a lot of questions come in, of, of course, about the XFL. So first, Jay, did you watch any of the XFL over the weekend? I am happy to report I did not catch any of it. No, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm not ashamed to report. I'm not happy to report that, but I'm not ashamed to say I did not catch any of the XFL. We want the XFL to succeed. Heck yeah, man. I love football. More football. Go football. <laughs> but I, no, I did not catch any. So I, I didn't get to watch a ton of it. I'd say I probably watched 20 minutes or so. But the best thing that I saw, I saw a, a play go to review. and they, they called it a first down on the field. It looked like the spot was a little bit questionable. The booth called down and said, we got to do a review. The entire review process is 100% transparent. You get the audio feed of the booth talking to the head referee. Oh, that's nice. Going through it, and it's there's none of this bull crap. A referee has to run over, look at a booth, and because he's the one on the field, He's the one who has to make How, the call, even though he can't control the technology that proves what did or did not happen. So the guy in the booth, this review took 30 to 45 seconds. The guy that's in the, what I was going to ask. How long? The guy in the booth said, hey, man, uh, it looked like he's a little bit short. The spot was, uh, was too far. You're going to have to back him up to the 48. It's going to be third and one. Also, this was a rolling clock situation, so you need to reset the game clock to 418. And then the ref says, Thank you. It's like, all right, man, have at it. This and it was done. It was over. There was not five minutes of of chitter chatter. They weren't thro throwing the commercial, which maybe that's the plan of the NFL. I don't know. Maybe the the point of challenges is they get to sneak in more ads. An, an extra round of commercials, which don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah. But it get, it got done. It was efficient, and the call was right. And it was like, why? Why can't the NFL do this correctly? It, it certainly seems like other people have figured out how to do quicker replays from a centralized location that just get it done and move on. I like that. The one that I would – I feel like I want to nerf some of the penalties. I want to nerf – All right. I want to nerf holding. Offensive holding or defensive? Offensive holding. Okay. You, you get one 
you know, away from the ball hold and you back up 10 yards, it's just the drive's over. I hate that. And likewise, I don't really love the penalty for pass interference. As uh, as a spot foul? Yeah, as a spot foul. Like, it, it, that one's tougher. That one's right. way tougher to me because it's like, well, in that case, then if you're going to give up a 45-yard completion, just tackle the guy. If it's a 15-yard right. penalty, you know, you, you save yardage. It's pretty presumptive to say – I am. I'm pretty confident that guy would have caught that ball. But so it, you you just get the yards. Is it, also similar with the uh, defensive holding being a first down. You know, sure. what I mean? it's like oh, it, it's it's third and fifteen, and there's a little defensive holding that was going for a five yard play, and it's first down. That yeah, hurts. not a big fan of that either way. Uh, James and Olney says with Kyle sh shenanigans <laughs> doing his best Bellatrix impression. How do you rank the San Francisco running backs in a 2020 redraft? Oh, man. What a stupid. Jarek McKinnon. Idea to rank these guys right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting you on this, James. I, I'm just, I'm saying. It's tough. Here's how I rank them. Bottom of the list, bottom. Of, I mean, they're awesome. They're going to be great. I guess I would go Tevin Coleman first because he's, he's got the, the starter. What? was so difficult for me as as an analyst was I mean weeks and weeks were going by like the end of the season e even into the postseason of people saying well Mostert has passed uh he's passed Tevin Coleman he's now the considered the starter for the team no he wasn't Tevin Coleman would start the game Mostert kept being the more valuable fantasy player except for the the one crazy Coleman game because Mostert would get the touchdowns but it's he wasn't starting. Coleman would be on the field a ton, and then eventually Mostert would come in. I would call that the backup. Yeah, and, and who's to say that San Francisco doesn't go out and add a running back right. either? I mean, you've got Jerick McKinnon coming back, who's still under contract. Obviously, Jeff Wilson Jr. Jerick, I can't believe McKinnon. <laughs> How is McKinnon possibly still under contract? What's crazy is I, I, I went to look it up because I'm like, he's got to just be able to be cut for no no money. Well, what's the dead cap? It would be $4 million right uh, now, dead can cap. Do it. Right, but he's still under contract in 2021 with a $2 million dead cap. Okay, so dead cap of four, but if they choose to pay him, what's it going to cost? Uh, his total salary is six and a half. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, he, he'll probably get cut. Yeah, I, I feel like we said that last year, too. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Want to remind everyone to check out jointhefoot.com. Join our fantasy football community. Get some perks like an extra show every single week. Hit that UDK pre-order, ultimatedraftkit.com. Lowest price you will possibly see this entire season. And the fantasyfootballers.com slash careers. Jason, tell them about the career just real quick. Once again, looking for a front-end developer with digital marketing skills who's amazing and ready to get whooped in foosball. That's what we need, and whooped. that's what you need. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in a couple days. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.